much for me. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up, rise up, rise up. Good evening and welcome to the Midnight Ride. I am your host, David Carrico, and we are now live, live, live. That was my cue. <laughs> <laughs> and we are so glad to have you all on board this evening, our broadcast this evening, which will be with my special co host, John Pounders. Uh, giant angels chained in hollow earth and the seething energies of of Lucifer. We are going to be exploring some absolutely fascinating things that have a direct bearing upon the world at large and on all of our lives. So we are very, very looking forward to presenting this information to you this evening. So John, do we have any announcements or promos before we get into the broadcast? Once again, we'd also like to thank our sponsor, Joshua Watts Leather Company. And you guys can go check out his website, just joshuawattsleather.com, I believe. And uh, I think we have some stuff here that he's made for us. I have this here. I think, David, you have your... Uh, yeah, I have my book bag here close. This it's not right at hand. This is, is our Sefer cover here that he's made for me. And the Sefer is really cool. If you guys don't have one, it includes all the apocryphal books and everything in there and you can get a uh, discount on it if you use the code nystv if you go to sefer.net but the cover this leather cover was made by joshua watts and uh, he's made us several things and we're very thankful for that and uh, so if you like leather products and if you were looking for a bible cover you're looking for a gun holster you're looking for anything along those lines i suggest joshua watts leather company he's made so many cool things for us and for all our people you can also get a shamal bracelet that he's made for now you see tv on etsy and really really cool stuff i do not believe you would be disappointed in anything that joshua made for you so with that we're going to get into our broadcast for this evening Giant angels chained in hollow earth and the seething energies of Lucifer. John takes on the midnight ride. All right, David, I appreciate this. And this is um, this is an interesting topic because it covers so much and it's hard to put it all into one show. But uh, we have done a lot of shows that uh, maybe, be, maybe go into more detail on some of the subjects that we're going to talk tonight. But this one is a uh, very detailed uh, orientation of the idea of the occult and they're tapping into the energies of Lucifer and also tapping into a race of beings that are under the earth or in the earth uh, as this as the scripture talks about the bottomless pit the all these different things so we're going to get into this tonight and talk about it we've done quite a bit of research and I feel like this is probably one of the more important topics because um, there is a coming great deception and this ties into it perfectly and so we're gonna I'm gonna go ahead and get started so uh, I got a slideshow here for you guys so the Vril Society this is uh, something that is there's no concrete proof of an actual Vril Society other than people's word and testimony but the concept of Vril and the underground super race is important to theosophy and a lot of different other religious books and groups and secret societies and the claim is that the Vril Society was a secret uh, community of occultists in pre-Nazi Berlin. And they were sort of the inner circle of the Thule Society or the Thule Society. However you prefer to pronounce that, that's fine with me. I don't care. Uh, I'm not, I, I definitely don't always have the proper pronunciations. I know 
uh, David's perfect at them. But I am very flexible <laughs> on word pronunciations. I'm known for my flexibility there. So right, and so there, are, and there's also uh, claims that there that in the close contact with the English group known as the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn and the Golden Dawn. So these all kind of groups tied together into what we're talking about here. So this this book right here, this is the Coming Race by Edward Bulwer Lytton. And this was the book that really fueled this society, this real society. Um, this guy, Lighton, David can tell you a little bit more about him too, but he was, uh, you know, really respected by the theosophists and he was respected by a lot of secret societies. He actually wrote a book. Um, let me go to this next thing here. This is the guy right here. This is Lighton. Oh, I'm not even showing the slides. There we go. This is Lighton. He was um, he was royal lineage. He was a wealthy author, and he um, he wrote a book called Zanoni, which is um, is a Rosicrucian novel. And this is one of the things that really made people look at his work. Um, now, this is a fiction book that he wrote, but the interesting things about it that we're going to talk about tonight is. The, though the names may be changed and the terms that are used for these different things, it is the exact same things that we see in the Vedic text, which I've did an sh entire show on the Vedic text one time and, and on the on these energies and the things you see in Buddhism, the things you see in all the magical religions, Kabbalah, you, you name it. These are the same um, same things that he talks about and also talks about the hollow earth idea behind this. And this is... Um, really just in, in every aspect in my opinion is one of the um most interesting books that i've ever read by and and so Helen, helena blavatsky most of you guys know this pretty face right here if you look at the i want you guys to check this out the pose of lighten here and then the pose of blavatsky they both have their hand by their face here but she really uh enjoyed um lighten and in her book, Isis Unveiled, and in The Secret Doctrine, she uh, mentions the Vril, and she compares it to the energy of the Vedic text, Kabbalah, and other forces. And David, you have a book here with you that you're going to quote, and she also does this in Chapter 5 of Isis Unveiled as well, where she compares all of these different uh, forces as the same as Vril, which I would definitely be in concurrence with her about this force. So go ahead, David. And basically what Lighten did this was a channeled work in the form of a novel. In our time, uh, this is what L. Ron Hubbard did with Scientology. He was a science fiction writer, and uh, he just brought his channeled science fiction over into religious reality. And when Lighton wrote this novel about this coming race out of the heart of the earth, the Theophysists understood that this was a channeled work and they took it as reality, and it is dark spiritual reality. And in this book by Lighten, he talked about the Vril power, and this Vril power is the power of the Aether, the power of the Prana. It's the common denominator of occult power from time immemorial. And in the Secret Doctrine, Blavatsky talked about a man that, uh, and it was published in 1888, uh, it's not uh, in the modern era at all. And there was a man at that time called Keeley that was making the most sophisticated electric motors in the world. And she says of Mr. Keeley, she talks at great length how Mr. Keeley was using the real power to make these motors, much in the same way that the Nazis supposedly used the real power um, a few decades later to make their flying machines. But it says, uh, she said it had been stated that the inventor of the self-motor was what is called in the jargon of the Kabbalist a natural-born magician. It is the vril of bulwer Lighton's coming race and of the coming races of our mankind. And she says that what Mr. Keeley says of sound and color is also correct from the occult standpoint. Hear him talk as though he were the nursling of the God's revealers and had gazed all his life into the depths of father, mother, Aether. And Aether is the modern terminology in the mystery schools for the Vril. And last night on FOJC, I talked about the Aether 
and how the secret of uh, one of the textbooks in the mystery schools, it teaches you how to manipulate the aether. This is the same as the vril, the same as the prana, and all of the occult, all the way back to the hermetic mystery schools of Greek and Egypt, it was all about manipulating this force. And when Mr. Lighton wrote this novel, they jumped on it because they knew that it was a spiritual reality. And this formed the basis going forward of the coordination of occult power with scientism. And we're still seeing the results of this scientism falsely so-called. And that's exactly true. And right here, I've got a uh, the Theosophical Society's logo here. And you, what you see here is you see the so-called Jewish star, or whatever you want to call it. You see the Egyptian Ankh, and you see the swastika. You see uh, some Vedic script, and you see all, and you see the serpent eating its own tail. They believe in all these religions, kind of combined into what they're doing. And when we look at the Theosophical Society, there's there's plenty of ties there, and we'll kind of get into some of those later. And to kind of back up your point about people receiving knowledge uh, from these these beings, or not necessarily these beings, but this energy force, the seething energy of Lucifer. We'll call it Vril tonight since we're talking about the Vril, but it's it's really the same thing. Uh, but you see, this is a quote uh, by Manly P. Hall, I'm, and right here he says in The Lost Keys of Freemasonry on page 48, says, when the Masons learn that the key to the warrior on the block is proper application of the dynamo of living power, he has learned the mysteries of his craft. The seething energies of Lucifer are in his hands, and before he may step upward, uh, he must approve his ability and apply the energy. So we see this this coming through from Manly P. Hall. For those of you who don't know who Manly P. Hall is, I'm not going to get into too much about it, but David can tell you uh, quite a bit about Manly P. Hall, and, and pretty much anybody that can look on Google can see that this guy is a 33rd degree Freemason, highly, expe- highly respected among Freemasonry, and highly respected in the occult world. Uh, he wrote the secret teaching of all ages. Secret is it secret doctrine or secret teaching of all ages? Yeah, the secret teaching of all ages is it's called. Yeah, he was eulogized when he died in 1990 as Freemasonry's greatest philosopher. And in that book, Secret Teachings of All Ages, there's actually an oath to Lucifer with a place for you to sign your name. <laughs> I mean, yeah. he was not a good guy. Yeah, you know, and he it talks was, about how magicians how magicians can uh, actually sell their soul to be able to have this demon that falls around. Yeah. Interesting, interesting stuff for sure. And um, so another guy that most of you guys have probably heard of, and and I've done, I guess, really about this subject right here in the show that I did about ancient watchers uh, on Midnight Ride here. We talked a little bit about this, but this is Nikola Tesla. And here's a couple quotes. One it says, my brain is only a receiver in the universe. There is a core from which we obtain knowledge. Strength, inspiration, strength, and inspiration. I have not penetrated into the secrets of this core, but I know that it exists. And then uh, another quote from Man's Greatest Achievements in 1907. It says, "All perceptible matter comes from a primary substance or tenuity beyond conception, filling all space. The akasha or luminiferous ether, which is acted upon by the living, giving prana or creative force, calling into existence in never-ending cycles all things and phenomenon. And the interesting thing about these quotes is this is this doesn't end with these guys. This goes on for mathematicians, the greatest people, the people that have gave the greatest achievements to our world are people that give great credit to this stuff. In fact, um, one of the people that you guys probably familiar or familiar with, if you watch the Ancient Watcher show, we did uh, Oppenheimer the father of nuclear warfare he quotes the quotes the um, vedic text which is where this concept some of this concept come from as well as the other ones and he says i become death the destroyer of destroyer of worlds and that's from the rig veda text in the in the uh, vedic uh, text go ahead david you had something to say well uh, this is one of the reasons why they're able to get away with what they do you know uh, a believer will hear about um manipulating the forces of the aether and this other guy talks about the prana and the vril and they think well it's all just a bunch of nutwhackers and they are but the what we're beginning to figure out or what we have have figured out and this is one of the most important dots we're connecting tonight that this is all the same thing and the way that they cloak what they do they'll call it uh different names and put it in different scenarios but while they're lying 
uh, Litton. He put it, or Bulwer Litton, a <laughs> Buttweiler. You know, not Rottweiler, he's a Buttweiler. <laughs> but uh, see, we told you about this name pronunciation thing we got going on here. <laughs> but this is how they cloak what they do. They use different names and different times. Well, here it is. This is just a novel. But you see, it's the same common thread and the same means to access this occult power. And we're figuring it out. We're exposing it. And by understanding what they're doing, we can combat this with the Word of God. And uh, it, it's really very plain. Once you just have this understanding that we're sharing with you this evening, this is a very important dot that we're connecting. It is an important dot. And, and the one, one thing that's really uh, important to note here is this energy that they are receiving from is an upside down twisted version of the energies that we receive from the Father, which is the Holy Spirit and his guidance through us and his ability, his power that has been given to us as believers. And there are people that that really take this and twist it the other way. But we, in, in this slide here that I have here, this, this talks about, uh, well, I probably ought to show it to you guys, right? Well, it talks about the, the having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. And it'll say, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy your name? Did we not cast out demons in your name, perform many miracles? Then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Now, this is an interesting one, this scripture right here, where it talks about people performing many miracles. Um, because they thought they were doing it in the power of the Holy Spirit. They thought that that's where they are doing it. But we see this thing going on now in not only the church, but in a lot of different religions where they are pulling their power from different sources. We see yoga in the church, which I did on the shows Ancient Technologies. We talked about yoga and we talked about all these different things in the church, pulling this false fire and pulling these false works and false uh, miracles that they're pulling into this. And they thought they were doing this stuff in the name of the, of the Father. They thought they were doing these miracles in, in the Holy Spirit. Uh, but in fact, it's very, uh, it's very possible that they were doing this through this seething power of Lucifer, I guess, seething energy of Lucifer yeah. instead. Yeah, and the seething energy of, uh, energies of Lucifer is the vril, is the vril. Yep. And, and all of these things, Blavatsky and Swinburne Clymer, the adepts of the mystery schools, they all equate it to vibrations. And over and over in the Word of God, it talks about the voice of God thundering. It thunders on a vibratory level that's very different than the vibrations of the vril and the eighth force. And when the voice of God thunders, we have to have the Spirit of God and our spirit to be able to decipher what God is saying to us. And it's a very profound passage in John chapter 12. Um, Yeshua said, Father, glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. The people therefore that stood by and heard it said that it thundered. You see, Yeshua could understand what the Father was saying. His receiver was working. The other people, their receiver wasn't working. They just heard thunder. So we have to have the Spirit of God in our human spirit to have the capacity to understand. The Scripture says, The natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. And for an unregenerate person, to try to understand the voice of God, this is like trying to listen to FM radio with an AM receiver. It's not going to work. It's a different vibration. No capacity there to receive. It'll just be noise. Exactly. And, you know, one of the, this is just some, a side note here. One of the concepts that they, that these people use, and this is really disturbing kind of right, right here, what we're going to talk about, but, uh, and we will get into the hollow earth. I know people are like, well, what was this hollow earth? This all ties in together because this is, this has to do with where, where they believe they're receiving this energy from the hollow earth, from the black sun and the earth and all these different things. But one of the ways that they attain some of this stuff is really disturbing because in our country that we live in, people think this is not possible. This is not happening. But in, in this slide, you see uh, human sacrifice, child sacrifice, and different things. They believe that by doing these things, they receive energy from these things. And there's a quote by Aleister Crowley, and I'll let you quote it, David, because you can quote it off the top of your head. Uh, Aleister Crowley talking about the perfect sacrifice for receiving energy. Yeah. Um, Crowley said that 
the perfect sacrifice was a male child of perfect innocence. And the concept, and I know, John, we were talking before the show about the concept of adrenal chrome. And this is extracted from the adrenal gland. And one of the most valuable things to Satanist is the adrenal chrome from a sacrificed child. And in the occult concept, the drawing down, understanding that they believe they're drawing down the powers of the aether into this sacrificial victim, and by exciting the poor victim and the innocent child to a, uh, a state of fear and terror, they amplify this into the adrenal glands, and then they extract it for their perverse uh, purposes. And someone that was linked with the West Memphis Three, you were sharing with me in the new movie, Johnny Depp actually talks about adrenal chrome in this new movie. Yeah, and this isn't really a new movie, but I think it was in the 90s. But oh, okay. he was, uh, he was uh, playing this reporter in this thing. He was going to this event, but in the whole time he's doing these drugs and and they talk about this drug called adrenochrome. And his partner, I can't remember the guy's name, he says, this is like, uh, it makes mescaline like ginger beer. Yeah. And he takes it, and they're talking about it. He's like, where did you get this? He said, I, I can't, I don't want to talk, I don't want to tell you. And I, some, you know, in so many words, I can't quote it word for word or anything. But he tells him this stuff, and then he said, you must have a dark source for this. And he said, a Satanist. And he's like, because adrenochrome only comes from one place. And uh, he said it comes from the brain. It comes from adrenaline in the brain, in the adrenal gland. And so, anyways, there's this this thing they talk about there. And, and, you know, something really crazy I saw the other day, Chrome, the app Google Chrome, has a plug-in called Adreno, which I thought was wow. really crazy and interesting. <laughs> I just saw that the other day, and it kind of blew my mind. But there, there's this power they believe in longevity, uh, through vampirism, eating, drinking of blood, and through the sacrifice and all these different things. So this all kind of plays into uh, this this force that these people are doing, and that's why we see such a huge number of people in Hollywood and people in in power. And for instance, I mean, this is a, a human trafficking is massive, and it goes all the way up to the highest echelons of power in our world, and uh, very interesting stuff. And so. Um, the Thule, Thule Society, did you have anything else to say? Well, before I, go I, well I just had the thought that even back in the Hermetic Mystery Schools, the god Hermes was associated with Mercury and the symbol of the Caduceus. Mm. And this was the Quicksilver, the witches, and the occult. And the same basic uh, thing and the same basic concept. Yeah, and um, to kind of get into a little bit more about the Thule Society here. Um, so this was the Thule Society was a occultists and Bolshevik group founded in Munich right after World War One, and it was named after a mythological a mythical northern country and Greek legend and uh, they sponsored the DAP which was the German Worker Party and was reorganized by Adolf Hitler and according to Hitler biographer Ian Kershaw uh, he said member lists were, you know, included Rudolf Hess, Alfred Rosenberg, Hans Frank, Julius Lehman, Gottfried Fetter, Dietrich Eckhart, and Karl Herr. And so you have these real prominent members. And in this picture here, you see Hitler with his hand hidden inside of his jacket here, which is a common ruler symbol where they have the hidden hand. Like uh, Napoleon. It, like Napoleon, like um, Churchill. Um, I mean, you've even seen, I've even seen pastors in. In, uh, I can't remember the Pat Robinson in a, in a magazine having the hidden hand symbol and, and a lot of these people have this symbol here and it's really interesting because you have this order right and this the interesting part about it um, I'm gonna go to this next thing here so the I, and I could be pronouncing this right, wrong I am not German and I don't claim to well I hope you don't mispronounce it John I, I, I hope say. not either it'd be the worst thing ever so uh, German Nindorn, this is the best I can pr pronounce this, um, and the, the, it is uh, in English the Order of Teutons. And the Thule Society was originally a German study group headed by Walter Niehaus, and uh, he was a wounded War One, one World War One veteran who turned into an art student for Berlin, Berlin, who became the keeper of the pedigrees 
of the German Norden, the German Order, the Order of the Teutons, a secret society that was founded in 1911. So this was a order that basically he was the pedigree keeper. He was the the um, basic, uh, I guess, kind of like the uh, genealogist type person that um, would have been similar to Lawrence Gardner for the Scottish and for different people like that. He was this guy that did this stuff. And it's really interesting, David, and I don't know for sure that there is a tie in this. I'm assuming that there must be, and you see, you can see the runic symbols up there on the top, but there, there, there's a tie-in, I believe, to the Teutonic Knights. And most people may have never, well, some of you guys that listen to the show often have heard of the Teutonic Order, Teutonic Knights, uh, but the Masters of the Teutonic Order. In this slide, it shows a bunch of the different symbols. We have, the, like, the Knights Templar, etc., that they played off of, but I wonder... Uh, this these order of Teutons and the Teutonic order, how closely related they are. Well, they very much are. And basically what we have going on here, the real society was an occult order. And there was a lady, Maria of Ostrica. And here again, that's probably not the <laughs> precise pronunciation, but she was a very beautiful woman. And she was able to use her charms to get donations to fund the real experiments with uh, technology that she wanted to perform. And from the real society, there was a fellow by the name of Dietrich Eckhart, and he took the occult order into a secret society. And the Thule Society, and there was another secret society called the New Templars that very much saw themselves as the continuation of the Teutonic Knights and the Knights Templar that were this religious military order that were going to bring to power this German messiah. And there was a fellow by the name of Guido von Liszt who paved the way for this in his writings combining theopathy with German folklore. And he come up with the concept of the German messiah. And of course, this was the role that Hitler stepped in to fill. And these groups, and in the real society, Karl Haushofer, and Dietrich Eckhart both went on to be personal mentors of Hitler, and they saw him as this German messiah, and this is how Hitler saw himself. So very much they saw themselves in much the way that the Knights Templar and the Knights Malta in the Catholic orders did. They were this military religious order that was going to bring in their German messiah. And it's interesting, you know, this the swastika symbol that is used this is you know and nowadays people don't even they don't know their history they don't know where symbols come from they automatically assume that it means uh, nazi uh, racist or whatever but these symbols date very far back and i'm going to show you this this is uh, in in buddhism you see it you see it in realism locally you see in the hopi the christian the malta tibet um you know china japan islamic hindu celt bali Aztec, Japan, Greek, you know, Jewish, etc. You have these these symbols that keep popping up all over the place, okay? And it, it makes you really wonder where this come from. Of course, the theos we saw that the Theosophy symbol came from that. So here's a little bit of a background on on the swastika. The name swastika comes from the Sanskrit, which takes us back again to the Vedic uh, text, and it said denotes the uh, conducive to well being or auspicious. And as if it's in clockwise, it's called the swastika, and it's the symbol of the sur the surya or the sun, and it means prosperity and good luck. Why the counterclockwise, which is the one I believe Hitler used, um, is called the savastika, and I, I believe that's how you pronounce it. And that's probably how a German would pronounce that. And it symbolizes night or the tantric aspects of Kali. And for those of you that don't know who Kali is, Kali is the god. And if you watch Indiana Jones, you actually they give a pretty good history on who Kali is. But Kali yeah. is the god that has all the different arms. And she has the thuggies that worship her and go around and kill people for her. And this is where we get our term thugs nowadays from rappers. And, and it's actually interesting. I did a little bit of study on this. And a friend of mine um, took pictures of this, actually. But in the bottom of... Uh, the founder of one of the major record labels of in hip hop, 
he has a statue of this collie. And mm-hmm. this this term thug is what a lot of rappers have coined for people that are going out kind of doing their thing. And these thugs were their group of bandits that would go out and kill people and bring you know, rob people and do all these different things. But anyways, this this collie is a, a goddess, of a, a evil goddess that kills people just really wicked. And this is where this, this symbol uh, comes from. And this is interesting because the technologies, right? We talked about this before when, when I was doing the show on the Ancient Watchers. These technologies from the Vedic texts were... Um, like the Vedic texts originally were compiled by the Aryans. This is before the Hindus yeah. used it, the Indians used it. They were compiled by the Aryans. And this symbol comes from that. And so the, Hitler was obsessed with actually pulling from these, uh, pulling these technologies and searching the world for different things. And this is a... this this slide right here shows ufos with uh or or you know flying saucers with um hitler behind and these are actual some of these are actual pictures of what you would see and then we have the spear of destiny and then we have this hollow earth idea on here and you have this stuff they they were obsessed with looking for these things you don't you can be an ignorant person and you and there's probably going to be people they never were anybody that can look into history can really just see this and it it doesn't take a, a genius to know that they were obsessed with looking for these artifacts and excess of looking for these places and, and obsessed with pulling the energy from this black sun or from this this vril or from whatever you want to call it. Yeah, and they believed that this power was coming from the heart of the earth, just like in Lighten's novel. And the reason why uh, when the Allies went into Berlin, they found a thousand Tibetan monks in German uniforms, and they were all out there dead. Uh, apparently from a mass suicide, and it was Karl Hossover who was in the Vril Society and also in the Thule Society, a personal mentor to Hitler, and he taught at the University of Munich, and he was the driving force behind the Ahan, the Aharambe, which was this branch of Nazism that would track down uh, these artifacts all over the world, and Hossover uh, instigated this uh, mission to Tibet because they understood that the vril and the prana was the same thing and that it had these religious connotations. And there is an admission. Uh, there was a German rocket scientist called Willie Lay, and he came to America in 1935, and he admitted that the whole theory behind the German rocketry and aircraft program was the Vril. So they understood it was religious, and they uh, they understood it was coming from fallen powers within the heart of the earth. And this was their goal, that there was nothing that the Nazis did in action or in symbol that was not tied to the occult and this understanding of the Vril. And that, that ties into a little bit of, you know, brings the memory of Jack Parsons to mind. You oh, know, yeah. somebody that they did this this working. Um, it wasn't the Babylon working. It was it was, it was the Babylon working yeah. that they did where they um, did this magic ritual uh, where Elron Hubbard was actually involved. And, and Jack Parsons is known as like the father of, of American rocketry. You know, he it's, it's really crazy how it all ties in. But they claim to pull this power uh, from this stuff, and it just kind of the list goes on. I mean, the, the more we bring up, the more I can think of all these different yeah. people that are tapping into this stuff. And L. Ron Hubbard was another yeah. novelist that started his own religion based on these very same occult principles. Yep. Another name, Scientology. Well, it's not another thing, it's just the same old thing. Exactly. It's just the same old thing, repackaged and reordered here. So when we get into the idea, I guess, about the hollow earth. And so we'll get into this idea and there's a lot of different concepts on how this is taking place. And I don't think anybody really knows exactly how it works unless they've been there themselves. And, but you see these, these concepts, you have this central sun inside of Argatha, which, uh, according to some people, Admiral bird, according to, uh, whether or not you believe that this journal wasn't ta- you know, tampered with that he went through, through the <coughs> North pole and he went through into this place and you have the central sun, you have the city, that goes that you have in there and you have ufos that come in and out of it um and this is the first down at the bottom right you see this uh, satellite photo uh that supposedly shows the first photos of the hole at the pole now depending on your worldview of the earth which my view of the earth comes from the scripture i believe that we are living on a uh 
a enclosed system with a um, with a um, dome around us, and we have a underground underneath us. We have a hollow earth. The Bible talks about a bottomless pit. It talks about Sheol. It talks about all these different things. But we have this. They became obsessed with this idea, and they believed it was inhabited. Uh, according to the real book, it talks about this too. He fell through the cracks and he saw these these race of people that were superior to humans. And there also there talks about reptilian type creatures in in certain books that talk about these things. And the, you know they were really obsessed with going to Antarctica, and they they actually went there and they had this place uh, that they called um, New Schwabia and uh, New Schwabenland, and it's the given to an area and you can see the area there i've got the coordinates on there for you where they claim this place is and it's really interesting because when we look at their obsession with that they actually went and visited with a group of people uh that we know them as tibetan tibetan monks and all these different people that believed in this stuff as well they had a concept where it's called shambhala and in Shambhala, it's an uh, ancient text where they have various traditions that mentions beings from another world that exist within our own. And in Tibetan Buddhists, like I said, in Hindu traditions, it's Shambhala. And it's the hidden kingdom within our own planet and a place that we don't necessarily understand here. And so that you see here on the right here, you have this picture depicted of the Shambhala. And then on the left, you see these Nazi is meeting with these Tibetan monks up here on the left and you have this this expedition that they made and and talked to these different people which is very interesting because um, you know in the scripture in the scripture we have an idea a concept of this the earth and this is the one done by logos bible software and this is what the earth is actually described as and you can see that Sheol we have this great deep we have the foundations of the earth we have this pit inside of the earth and then we have this waters above the firmament in our sky and this is what i believe we're looking at and of course there's people that would not believe this map they would believe that the earth is a globe and and there's somehow this bottomless pit inside this uh sphere which to me doesn't necessarily make sense i don't believe we know exactly how the earth looks because the bible says it's unable to be measured i believe that there is aspects of it that we have no clue we only know what we're told about it in scripture and this is what we're told about it. So it's really interesting. But we have this pit. And we have these things mentioned in, in the Bible. We have in Ephesians 4, 9 through 10, it says, Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all the heavens that he might fill all things. And Revelation speaks of a bottomless pit that the destroyer will come out of. And it talks about these the pit with these locusts will come out of and these uh, spirits that look like frogs. And uh, there's, there's definitely a biblical concept. And also, if you read the book of Enoch, the first book of Enoch, the only one I endorse, you will see this concept of these angelic beings that are actually chained in this earth being. And I believe these are the beings that they were going after. They were looking for these beings to gain more knowledge, uh, to learn how to tap into the force better, to live longer, to live forever. And do you have anything to say, David, before I go on to the next one? Well, it's very biblical. Amos 9 and 1, it says, though they dig into hell, shoal. And it was pictured literally as in the heart of the earth. And in the book of Jubilees, chapter 9, there's the fascinating passage where there are 90% of the Nephilim spirits that are confined to the underworld, while 10% are left here in the first heaven with us. So there is much scriptural foundation for uh, powerful spiritual dark forces being in the underworld. It's very biblical. Very biblical. And it, and it really, I believe, is very logical that that they knew, they knew about this. They knew about this place, not only from the scriptures, but they knew about it from the Vedic text. They knew about mm -hmm. it from this real book. They knew about it from every ancient source that's out there. Not only did they know about it from the sources, they tapped into it. You know, when you've got guys like Tesla that are inventing things that are well beyond our understanding, giving credence to this, when you got people that like this automobile manufacturer they're giving credence to this thieves indian mathematicians that are giving credence to this Oppenheimer that's giving credence jack parsons all these different people there's proof i believe at a certain i mean i don't know this evidence there's enough evidence to convict in my opinion uh that this is actually uh how it is and you know they believe this so much there's operation high jump and i don't know how many of you guys are familiar with operation high jump but in operation high jump um it was a, 
a title by the United States Navy uh, in our Antarctic Developments Program. And it was done in 1946 to 1947, and it was organized by Admiral Byrd, which is where a lot of this hollow earth theory, the people get their journal. And I don't believe you have to go to Admiral Byrd necessarily for the journal of this place. And I don't know how much of it he tapped into, how much he, how much of the journals are corrupted or not. But it's interesting that they had this thing that commenced on the 22nd of 1946 and ended in February 1947. And uh, it had 4,700 men. 13 ships and 33 aircrafts that were associated with this a big operation and um, they were the official reason was to establish a military base on this on this thing and then you know what I believe personally about this is I believe that they were trying to jump over the ice walls or they're trying to get over a certain part of this that maybe they couldn't get over and I don't know exactly what was going on but it's an interesting concept. I mean, not too long after that, you have was, I guess, about 20 years after that, you have op, uh, Operation Fishbowl, where they sent nuclear weapons up into the sky uh, as high as they could go to explode and, and create this kind of a fishbowl phenomenon looking thing that's really interesting. I mean, you have, uh, I looked at all the list of people that had explored the Antarctic. There are people that liter- that went there and they believe that there's this hole that we're talking about here. This is where the northern lights comes out of this aura. In the book of Enoch, it talks about this mountain or whatever that this these lights are coming out of, and they're actually angels that are coming that can be as men. And all. It's, it's just really interesting how it all ties in together. You got anything to add to that, David? Well, I believe one of the reasons why there are so many lies about biblical cosmology is that they don't want scientists to figure out the real secrets to the power. They want them for themselves. And I believe when the Nazis, it's a well-established fact that the Nazis went to Antarctica in 1938 before Hitler uh, came to power right during his initial rise, and they established a base there. And I believe that these guys, whatever you think about them, they were very, very smart guys, and they were making their plan B. If their little World War II experiment didn't go right, this was their escape plan. And it's also a well-documented fact that there were over 40 of these huge U-boats. And there was a German uh, attack submarine that we're most familiar with. But there was also a huge underwater transport that could hold over 400 tons of material. And over 40 of these were never accounted for as being captured or destroyed. And I believe it's very plausible and all too obvious that this is where the elite of the Nazis that were never found, they made their escape to. And the fact that uh, history tells us that Eva Braun and Hitler died in a bunker in Berlin. I just don't believe it. Not going for that one. Yeah, and it's it's interesting because we have Operation Paperclip, which I uh, have a. Uh, this is not where I was wanting to go just yet with it because I I think I've got my stuff all kind of mixed up here. But there's a show here. I'm going to transition over here. There's a show called Hunting Hitler, and this is led by uh, Robert Booker Bear. And he's an Amer- he's an author, and he was a CIA case officer who was assigned to the Middle East. And they went and traced these CIA documents, these FBI documents that the CIA, FBI, and M M15 they absolutely knew that Hitler had not died. They knew where he was for part of the time. And this these documents prove it. These are documents that they've released to the public for everybody. Look, it's a really cool documentary on History Channel. I think you could, if you have if you don't have History Channel or whatever, and you wanted to watch it, you could probably find it to buy the series. But I would suggest looking at it. But I agree with you. They had these these submarines that they proved actually went there. I think they actually found one uh, in the bottom in season two. They you know they went through these sources and located escape routes and, and stuff like that. But I th- this kind of goes into, uh, David, I, about what we're talking about, Operation Paperclip. So Operation Paperclip, um, we have this interesting thing where these hundreds of scientists, these Nazi scientists, were actually hired on by our own government, hired on to um, take the reins, I guess, for technologies and to, to move forward. I mean, we had already in America, we had people that supported uh, the Nazi regime like Ford and the Bushes, the Bush families, all these different things. They really supported the Nazi regime. And we've been made to think that this was some crazy uh, racist organization, which they, they were to a certain extent. But they're also 
uh, the same people that run our country. You know, these are the same people that that are um, scientists in our country, the same people that are leaders in our country. They believe this stuff as well. They believe that whatever these people believe, they believe it as well. They, they're on the rise to technology. They're moving towards, they're moving towards making us a better people. You've talked about people raising their chakras, raising their energies and raising these things. This is a, this is a real thing. And I, in my opinion, when you look at stuff like this, you look at these, this group of men, these are all Nazi scientists that were brought over. And you look at the idea that the CIA, MI5, uh, FBI, they all knew where Hitler was. They all knew he was alive after that. They all knew it. And they, and these people that hunting Hitler actually went to these places and proved these compounds were there that they found. Um, they knew it. And, and you have just Warner Von Braun, for instance, the, the guy that started NASA, the, the brains behind the operation that won awards and all these different things. This guy was a Nazi scientist that started this organization. And we have stuff like this over and over and over again. We see it. And I don't know how blind you have to be to not think, well, maybe there's something more to this story than what we hear. Because you have to remember history is written by the winners. It's written written by the people that have the power. It's written by the people that are can take over and do the things they want. They can say what we want. The more I study history, David, I don't know if it's like that with you. The more I realize it's very veiled and you have to really dig to find out the truth. And even if you can find out the truth, because they've written, they've hidden other stuff. It's, it's pretty intense. And you've got these huge events like the death of Hitler, nine 11 Kennedy assassination. We're not getting the truth about it. And if you look at it, um, any of these conspiracies, it's obvious that we're not getting the truth. And all the way back in the 70s, there was a movie with Gregory Peck in it called The Boys from Brazil. And this was the whole scenario of this, the uh, hunting down of well-documented of these um, Germans that went, many of them, to Argentina. Mm -hmm. And there was actually, after the war was over, there was a German submarine that was had to dock in uh Argentina because it was having mechanical problems and it was obviously on its way uh, to Antarctica. And there's another documentary on Netflix about all of the twins in this certain area in South America. And it's a well-established fact. The Nazis were there. Yeah, Mengele was actually, yeah. yeah. Mengele was there, and yeah. many of the most elite Nazis, they were right there in South America. Well-established fact. So, you know, only the people, and it's also a well-established fact that the FBI certainly believed that Hitler did not die in the bunker, and they actively pursued Hitler for several years after the war. And they certainly didn't believe the Hitler died in the bunker story. It's a well-documented fact, and facts are ugly things for people that want to close their eyes to the truth. Yeah, and you have to be pretty blind to close your eyes to these truths, too, because, I, you know, there are people, though, like, that will not hear anything that we're saying right now. They... Mm. They believe that, you know, everything that they hear from the, from education, we have to remember where our education and our media come from because, you know, the same people that got brought you the propaganda of Germany, okay, the same people came over here and started something. They changed the name from propaganda to media, and mm -hmm. they've programmed our minds from an early age. They've also taking control of the education system. What's the best way to control a generation is to control the education system. Yet we still let the enemy educate our children. We still let that happen, which is blows my mind. It absolutely blows my mind. If you can take your child out of school, put them in a private school or homeschool them, do it, please, because you, we are raising a generation that is going to be off the charts when it comes to complete craziness, complete chaos. It's going to be off the charts because we are letting these people run our societies and to think that oh our government would never do anything to hurt us what about mk ultra which is a documented fact with the cia mind control stuff that they did all these different operations that they did that they were called out for these are things that our government has done to us and other governments have done things you know you look at the the different in the different um um science experiments they were doing on the Jews and on the, uh, the what is the other group? The uh, gypsies. The gypsies and mm -hmm. all these different people in Germany. If you look at the list, I mean, you can go and look at the list of experiments. 
outright amazing, all in the name of science, all in the name of these different things. We have the people in the media that are owned by the same people. They have a right-wing story and a left-wing story, uh, and they are owned by the same people, and they get us, people like us, to battle each other over a candidate that could care less about us. These candidates don't care about you. If they saw, if they knew that you were starving to death, you think they'd come out of their pocket to help you? I don't think so. And you, we have people battling each other. If you look at the situation in Jamaica before politics, before right wing, left wing, everybody got along pretty well. They were all in the same predicament together, of poverty or whatever you want to call the predicament they're in. But as soon as you have these politics brought in, all of a sudden you got battles in the street, people fighting each other because they have, oh, I'm taking this side or I'm taking this side. And the crazy thing is you have pictures of these Jamaicans carrying around the prince of England on their shoulders <laughs> on a throne. Okay. And, and if it doesn't make people think, I don't know what will, I cannot, I don't know. I, I This is the goal of our channel is to wake people up because yeah. the truth will set you free. And Adolf Hitler was not a liberal. He was a conservative. And in, when he first ran for office, I believe it was in 38, 85% of the evangelical Christians in Germany voted for him. Yeah. And Hitler hated the communist philosophy. He was a nationalist. And the communist philosophy, this would be the to the extension of the socialist philosophy of Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton. Theirs is the socialist communist philosophy. Hitler hated this. He was the right-wing conservative that was a nationalist that talked about building the economy. And after World War I, the Weimar Republic was devastated in a horrible economic depression, and Hitler was the one that built the Volkswagen and uh, lifted up the uh, a German economy, and this was done through handpicking him and establishing him through secret societies. And Dietrich Eckhart of the Thule Society, and he was also in the Vril Society, the Thule Society, OTO, Golden Dawn, and he made the famous quote. He said, and I'll read it here for you to get it exactly right. Uh, he said, follow Hitler. He will dance, but it is I who have called the tune. Mm. And Hitler was a chosen person, just like many of the people in power today. They are chosen because they can be manipulated and controlled. And people that believe they're hearing the truth on the evening news and that the people that you see as the visible heads of government are really uh, running the, the show, this is just not the way that things are. Yeah, and not only not only do they get by with manipulating these people, but they get away scot free. You think anybody in the Theosophical Society went down for any of these war crimes? I'd bet not. No. Yet they they found you know the story supposedly is they saw Hitler in a bar, and he you know if you remember the speeches of Hitler, he was you know just real like energetic, and he really the nationalism. People were like, yes, our country sucks. You're gonna do something good for it. Thank you. You know what I mean? And the, the, I mean, if you listen to his speeches, he was conservative to the core, big time. And I'm not bashing conservatives or liberals or taking sides. We're all in this together. I feel like the Jamaicans before the before the uh, political powers, we're all in this together. I'm not going to fight you over a candidate. I could care less about those candidates because really my kingdom is not of this world. My kingdom is within. I'm not worried about these people. Uh, but it is very interesting that they have a manipulative mind control on us by doing this, but you look at the people in power and I wasn't going to, you know, I w I'm not going to get into too much different things about it, but these guys are controlled by money. These guys are controlled by whoever the strongest hand is. I mean, they don't want to be killed first off. And second off, they like their pocketbook full of money. They love that stuff. And you have these corporations, like we talked about before the show, we we're talking about these corporations that control the world. These council of 300, we have these, these, um, these bankers, banking systems, we have the Rothschilds, we have all these different groups that make the money, they control the country, they don't care about who the politicians are. They know all they got to do is throw a million dollars somewhere in someone's way and they get by whatever, whatever, whatever they want. It doesn't matter. And we as a people are sitting here fighting each other, literally fighting each other in the streets over an ideology that is not even existent, a fake ideology, a fake thing that is not even real. You think your Republicans are any different than the liberals? Yeah, by standards, by what they tell the public, yes, they are. But I've been through a lot of different presidents, and David's been through more than me. 
I haven't seen mm-hmm. big difference between any of them. Anyway. I literally voted for Nixon. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I voted for Nixon, yeah, so which shows I can't. I'm not always right. Exactly. And so we look at these. We look at this. Things don't. I mean. All oh, the stock market is going to crash. People, the things still go the same exact way they've always gone. These guys sit together and drink together and hang out together, go to games together, hold each other's hand. There's a picture of Bush holding Michelle Obama's hand. Do you guys remember the elections and remember the bad things said about each other? The, the people need to wake up and wake up and see things for what they are. They're doing it right in front of our faces. No problem. And this is the real folly of the people of God seeking political solutions and i'm not saying what people want to do in that realm uh vote not vote that's between you and the father but to think that there are solutions to the problems of the world or the problem of our nation through politics this is sheer folly and this is one of the manipulation cards they play well let's get all of the christian people instead of building the kingdom of god which will really hurt the kingdom of darkness let's get them building a political party that at the top is no different than the the party it vilifies and pretends to oppose and this is the games they play they want people to use their time and energy on that which will not really hurt the evil one it's exactly what they do and they've done a very good job of it i mean they're they've done such a great job and you know, I don't know what it'll get to wake people up. I believe the coming of the Messiah will wake people up. I mean, everybody's knees are going to bow. People are going to be terrified at his coming. Uh, but I wish that people would wake up before that. The Father, you know, Yeshua said to people, Jesus said to people, he said, the kingdom's right in front of you. You don't even see it. He said, you know, you have to come become like one of these little ones to be enter the kingdom, become like this. It's right in front of us. People are thinking all this further kingdom down the road. The kingdom is here right now. The kingdom of heaven is at hand, and we don't even see it because we're too worried about this other kingdom, this two-winged bird that is controlling our world. We're not, we're not seeing the real kingdom anymore. There's something to those words. Everything he said matters, and it makes sense, but people are so controlled and so mind-controlled and manipulative and we want them to snap out of it. There's no doubt that there's so many different things. And, I, and I, if you want to have nothing to say about this topic, I'll go on to talk a little bit about a, a cult that is going on from here. So I'm going to transition a little bit here to kind of change the topic before we have a stroke over here to getting getting crazy about this stuff. So this is a this is a group called Realism. Uh, Realism or the Raelian movement is a UFO cult that was founded in 1974 by Claude Vurihan, and he was also known as Rael. And so this is interesting. People are, you know, think of this guy or whatever. We had a guy, I believe his name was Eddie, that was on the show before that was actually a member of this cult at one time. But we see this symbolism, this Nazi symbolism in there. And the the uh, Raelians, they actually um, founded this group, okay, this, uh, this company called Clonade. And if you look here, this is their advertisements. This is a clonate dream team, it says over here. And it's got the neurobiology. They got PhDs in neurobiology, PhDs in neuroscience, uh, general protect- practitioners. They got bio biotechnologies, people, PhDs in that. They've got uh, PhDs in physical chemistry. And this is a group called Clonade that they actually uh, say that they clone human beings. And you look at their symbols here. Uh, if you look on their website, there's they're all over the world. They're in different places, but they have um, they have this thing going on within the Raelian movement. And recently, I saw this uh, video, and I'm going to transition over to this real quick here. Uh, there's this video, and I can't play the video. I wanted to play it because I had to test it out because last time I did a video, I did talked about Jim Carrey in the video, and I talked about how he was talking about summoning these entities to talk and they cut the video out so I look stupid. I'm sitting here talking about this video I'm getting ready to play and then on the <laughs> on the actual recorded video it's not there. So I'm gonna show a picture of the guy instead because I did test it out to see and it's definitely banned almost everywhere except for the people that showed the interview and I believe it was called like Vlad TV or Vlad or I can't remember some group. But if you look up this guy, you'll see his name's Kid Boo. Or Kid Boo Boo I have no <laughs> nowadays these rappers look completely nuts but if you look on his chest in the middle in that um right there he has the Raelian symbol in the middle of his chest there's a video recently where he talks about he is the second generation clone of this person and his first generation clone actually uh died and they sent his skull to the Raelian mo- movement to clone aid 
and they took this piece out where he's got that tattoo in the front that holds all their memories and that's where they take that piece out so that they can clone them and they can still transfer their memories over to these people but he talks about being cloned escaping from the cloning facility he talks about uh, the immortality behind this stuff real really into a lot of this movement and cloning is an interesting concept an interesting thing that we have here because we we have this you know this concept to live forever we have this concept of tapping into this energy source that makes us just so smart um and this is the same deception the same temptation that adam and eve received in the garden this temptation to become as gods live forever to have this knowledge and um this is one of the groups. There's a lot of different groups. We could have gone. A, I could have gone a lot of different ways with all this stuff, and really to be able to pack everything into one show is going to be nearly impossible. But I know you did a little bit of research on some of this cloning idea and some of these interesting creatures that have to do with the eyes entering the eyes and all these things, David. So I'm going to pass it over to you for a second if you want to talk about that. All righty. Um, the Vril is talked about as being an actual reptilian creature and theoretically the nazis claimed that their scientific revelations of their saucer designs and rocketry designs came from the occult powers from the real society now it's very theoretically possible that people that are today in the contact with the same powers that they are the propagators of this black science and one of the this areas is cloning and what they call droning and droning is what they claim is the entry of the vril reptilian creature into the eye and this allows the vril to take over the body now there are multiple people that have testified that they have been uh, violated by these vril creatures through the eye socket now there's actually a biblical foundation for this um, in scripture uh, in Matthew I'll just go and read the scripture uh, in Matthew chapter 6 and uh, verse 23 and it's something that Yeshua said and this is so profound when you begin to read this in this context and this is not a context that has just emerged um, in our in our time and in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 23 my flipper isn't too quick tonight but Matthew <laughs> 6 23 but if thine eye be evil Thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness. That word for evil in the Greek, in the Septuagint, this is used for the noisome beast that the Father said he would send upon uh, Israel if they did not uh, keep covenant and obey his Torah. And it's also interesting that this word uh, in the Hellenistic period, in the Theological Dictionary of the New Testament, this word that Yeshua used for evil and associated it with the eye, this was in the Hellenistic period associated with wild beasts of magic who unsettles marriage or snatches away the blushing maidens. And it's just so fascinating that in the Vril uh, novel, the power came from within the earth from a black sun. This would, was carried over by the Order of the Black Sun from uh, Heinrich Himmler in the Willisburg Castle where they had the black sun there in the middle of uh, the floor, and they channeled this Vril energy. And this uh, area where this came forth was the black forest the black sun the area of the black forest and there was actually a real saucer that crashed in the black forest in 1936 there were articles written about it um, it's a matter of public record and this is also the very same 
area that uh, in the University of Munich that gave rise to the real society, Hitler, some of his biggest rallies. This is also the area in Bavaria that gave rise to the Bavarian Illuminati. And Adam Weissoff talked about the fire worship in the Illuminati. Same exact thing as this real force. And there has been a powerful territorial devil that has worked in this area of Bavaria that has caused two world wars. It has unleashed the connection between uh, the occult world and science and brought it into our time in a way that is unprecedented. And I believe that it's very possible that when the Nazis established their base in Antarctica, that much of the New World Order is run at this very hour from uh, the real command central, not from the White House or the Kremlin, but in these underground bases in Antarctica where they are still making contact with giant angels chained in the hollow earth. You know, it's interesting. We have this these these uh, movie stars and these musicians that they do the symbol. You know, this symbol right here. And that, and if you look in the Vedic texts and in Buddhism, this symbol means something. And also upside down, it means something. Mm-hmm. And it has to do with these energies. But they also do this symbol where they cover. And I can't hardly do my my wrist isn't I've hurt my wrist before so it's not that flexible but I'm not going to do it to somebody will do a screenshot but where they flip <laughs> they flip their hand over and they do it and it's like a, they're Founders like, is a real yeah I've yeah so you know what I mean they flip it over and they put it over their eye and they have their fingers hanging down it, you know it makes you wonder if this is not a signal out to and I know that all of them are doing it some of them are just trying to be cool or they're trying to create a stir or whatever but I wonder if this is not maybe one of the symbols to show uh, who's who in this matter and who is being controlled by whatever this thing is. And we have, you know, it's interesting because we have this AI feature that's being kind of added to society. We have, uh, I, I saw an interview that Joe Rogan did with, um, oh, what's the guy's name? Elon, Elon Musk, Elon Musk, and very sober interview that he talks about. He tried to warn people uh, as soon as the, the, you know, this something happens that it'll be too late and all these different things talking about this AI function. And then you see the symbol associated with it. And if you have this, this real parasite that can actually enter into machinery or enter into a human or enter in and clone itself, we have an interesting concept here. If you guys, if you've not seen carbon alter, I wouldn't, I'm not going to suggest it by any means, but there's a show that was on Netflix about these clones, these people that were became basically like gods that had continued cloning themselves. They had different clones of their body. And every now and then they had this thing in the back, this chip in the back of their head that they would have to update it so that if they did die, they can just take that chip, excuse me, take that chip and put it in the back of their clone so that they can have all their memories. They would update like a computer every so many days or every so many hours or whatever. And you have, you have this interesting thing going on that I don't know exactly what can be stopped it other than the second coming of the Messiah when he comes through and, and comes through like a wild man and just destroys it all because the, the, the way the technology is moving because of this seething energies of Lucifer. I love the way Manly P. Hall looked, taught, said it or this Vril. Um, there's nothing that we that we can do really to, to uh, wake up everybody enough to stop it because Right now we're doing a show, and I think we've got maybe 1,100 people watching. We've got 1,100 people watching right now. That's a small portion of the world. That's nothing. You know, maybe by the time this is done, 500,000 people will watch it. Very small portion of the world that is in this in, in this um, in here. And unless everybody decides all of a sudden, you know, listens and and really learns who they are. Uh, this is why our message is so important, and and to bring this back around to a a great um, important message, I want I want people to realize that you were created, right? You were created by a creator that wants wants you to understand why you're here. A lot of the the whole the <laughs> this is crazy, David, but you know the whole concept of Lucifer, the whole concept of everything has been to dumb down people. Yeah, has been to keep them from knowing who they are by entertainment, by sorceries, by 
putting stumbling blocks in front of them by doing everything they can to occupy their mind. Now we have these things called cell phones where you look at them and people stare at them all day long and they're occupied with downloading information to it via however they're doing it or taking information from it. There's never, I've seen, I've been with people before that are younger. They do not put these things down. I've been in front of people that sit in front of the television all day long. They're constantly preoccupied with what's going on in the world because they do not know who they are, and they have been under a curse. They've been bamboozled. They've been bewitched. Well, however you want to put it, okay? They've been put under the spell, and it's kind of like this show that I saw, and I can't remember what it was called, but this the uh, Rumpelstiltskin and the Queen, uh, the Queen had this curse that they cursed the rest of Storybrooke. And the other the people were working in there working as McDonald, you know, like uh, fast food workers and all these different things. You have a queen working as a but uh, like you know a server at a restaurant. You have all these different things, and this is kind of what I equate it to. They've 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 not. We're, the Bible says we're kings and priests. The Bible says that we are people that are His children. He says He came for us. He said He came only for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. There's only one group the Bible talks about. There's not like the church the the congregation of this, the 44,000 denominations, the Jews, all these different, there's only one people that he came for, and that's the people of Israel. He came for us, and he came to wake us up and to show us the kingdom of heaven that is at hand. He came for this, and the world is doing a fantastic job. Uh, I mean, the, those of you that have sat here for two hours or almost two hours, hour and a half, and that have listened to the show, this is not the norm. The norm is 10-second videos. You know, that's why they have them on these little Snapchats and stuff. People don't like to watch over these amount of times. So we all have to work together to do the best that we can to open people up to the truth. And what is the truth? The Bible says the truth has set you free. What is the truth? This is the thy word is truth. And who is thy word? Who is the word that was made flesh and dwelt among us? Who is that? Who is the, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and without him nothing was made. Who is that? That is the King Yeshua that came in here as a man to wake us up and show us what we are going to be one day. He came and he ascended into the depths of hell. He rose into the highest echelons of heaven and he showed us what these bodies of light will be one day when we awaken and when we see this thing through him it says there's only one way to the father not through this uh, uh, this prana not through this this uh, vril not through this uh, whatever you want to call it I mean you can call it whatever you want know, to see the energies of Lucifer there's one way to the father and that's through him he came and he showed us the way he showed us how to follow he showed us and he also gave his life as a sacrifice for us so that we could see him again so that we could be with him again and so we could become one with him again and this is the gospel the gospel is that he's come to the world and he's shown us the way and he's given us the power to be saved given us the power to become his children the bible says there's no difference between us and israel those that have come into him through the messiah we're not talking about a physical genetic israel here we're talking about a real Israel, the ones that he said, he, you know what John said before he uh, baptized the Messiah? He said that God could raise children out of these rocks. In Galatians, it says that anybody that's in Messiah are children of Abraham and heirs according to this promise. Seed of Abraham and heirs according to his promise. And this is what is important. I hope those of you that are listening tonight will not be hard-hearted to this truth. There is not very much of a chance that you are here tonight. I can tell you, you could be doing 100,000 million different other things. The chances of you being here in this world are 1 in 400,000. The chances That's the same chances of you winning the lottery 2.1 million times in a row. And guess what? The chances of you actually being here and listening to this message tonight, don't be hard-hearted. Let the Messiah in. Let him take control. And I'm going to pass it to David before we do questions. Isaiah 60 and 1 says, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and the, his glory shall be seen upon thee. And that is happening right now, like John said. There's mm. gross darkness out there, but the glory of the Father is arising on the remnant, the real Israel of God that's not connected with genetics. It's not connected with real estate. It's connected with faith in the shed blood of Yeshua, the Son of the Father that died for us on Calvary's cross. People are waking up and realizing they've inherited lies from the church, from our political institutions, our educational institutions. 
they're going back to the word of God and they're getting rid of these deceptions of lies. They're getting free and God is creating an end time army that's going to rip the mask of deception off of thousands. It's happening right now. And more and more, there's more blatant the this symbolism is getting. John talked about this eye symbolism and we we talked about that in the show on um, L.A., the city of fallen angels, and now there's a new symbology that you can put yourself together, a real interesting collage on, and this is the symbology of the eye with black makeup extending down from the eye. I've seen this in Mickey Minaj, in J-Lo, um, in uh, Rhiannon, and more of the very biggest A-list stars and celebrities, they're portraying this. And this is just exactly what is being said of the droning of the Vril, that it comes in through the eye, and it's the same old power. And remember, uh, this was portrayed in Fringe, and remember X-Files, that when they these aliens bled, they bled black blood, the black sun, the black forest, the power of the fallen angels chained in the heart of the earth. It's portrayed in uh, all of the science fiction because people are being conditioned to accept this lie. But guess what? The remnant of God, we're not going for it, but we're about the only people as the remnant that are not going to be fooled by this. This is the great deception that is going to propel the little horn into power. And if you ever think this is all linked to vibrations, Madame Blavatsky, Swinburne, Clymer, they all connected the power of the eighth and the power of the vril to vibrations. And of course, the big horn is Satan, the little horn, the, the false prophet, and the beast of Revelation 13, the first one. They're both referred to as little horns. And from time immemorial, associated with all of this has been the blowing of the horn and the vibrations. There is the shofar of God that is attuned into the vibrations of heaven, and there are these occult vibrations that are tuned into the powers of heaven hell. So we are on a different vibration. We've got a different receiver and we are not going to fall for their lies. Man, you know, the, there's been a lot said tonight that's so important. And if you want to go, we can get Donna on here. Hopefully, let me see if I can get the volume up here for Donna to come on. Donna, can you hear us? Can we hear you? Sister Donna, are you in the house tonight? Yes. Am. Well, Sister Donna's in the house, and it's time for Sister Donna to come on board and present to John and I some questions for our listeners, who, by the way, are the most intelligent listening audience in all of this good old non-global earth, is all I got to say. <laughs> so, Sister Donna... Give us some questions. All right. The first question is from Ron on YouTube. Could David touch on the mystery booms that many are hearing across the U.S. coming from inside the earth? Well, uh, this is uh, one of the theories that these noises that are being heard all over the world that these are actually uh, from vibrations from the heart of the earth. And from what we put forward tonight, uh, this is very, very possible. And an actual firsthand experience with this, back before I retired and before we're living where we are, um, I was getting to go ready to go to work. Uh, it was on a third shift job. And I heard a loud explosion. And I actually thought that it was so loud that a house must have blown up from a, a meth lab explosion or maybe a natural gas filling up uh, 
in the house. But I went out and people, we lived in a trailer court at the time, and people were outside. It's just like it was so loud, instantly everyone came out. But there was nothing to be found. The fire department was called. No explanation for the noise. People have been hearing stuff like this all over the world, strange sounds. And here again, we're back to this idea of vibrations. And I think it's very, very possible that these vibrations, just as we shared tonight, that it is coming from the heart of the earth. And I I know this question wasn't for me too, but I wanted to uh, add to that. You know, CERN, we have these things called CERN, these uh, particle colliders that are really interesting because they represent this symbol as well. If you look at the CERN symbol, you have this symbol that goes in like this, it circles around uh, like this circles around and like this circles around. It creates this symbol, this uh, 666, yeah. whatever this symbol means for sure. This is the symbol it creates as the logo. Uh, you have outside Shiva, the destroyer of worlds, uh, which is in, in translation in the Greek tongue, Apollo, Paulos in the Hebrew, Abaddon, Abaddon. And you have this destroyer of worlds that is outside of this place. And we have... Uh, Definitely, I don't know exactly what kind of vibrations they're creating, but I guarantee it's it's uh, interesting whatever's going on. And, and the location of this place actually sits on the old Temple of Apollos right there. There's actually a Catholic church that sits right on top of this ancient temple of this destroyer. And uh, so we don't know exactly what's going on, but I can tell you this. David's on to something here when you talk about these vibrations and, and these different things going on, but they have... Uh, at one time, the uh, bracelets that everybody wore that tracked everything, Fitbits, um, at one time they had this device where you could track where all the Fitbits were in the world. And they took it down recently, but you could go there and you would see these little circles where these workers were working. You go on Google Maps and you look and there's no building there. It's just an under, it must be an underground facility and there's people wearing these Fitbits underneath these and they're all over the world uh, creating this vibrations, I believe, these, these forms of communication, whatever they may be. But I just wanted to add to what you were saying there. Really interesting stuff. Okay. Caesar wants to know, what does this adrenal drug do? Well, it's a lot like... Um, what John said, it makes, uh, how to say mescaline look like a soft drink. Yeah. Or, like a or g- ginger beer or something. Yeah. Along those lines. Yeah. yeah. It is, um, it, it's just pure evil. The idea that, um, you can exploit human beings to this end is, um, you know, is, is what's more evil than this. And, um, that's about all you can say about it. It's just pure evil. Don't you think it puts people into an altered state? Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. That, it's like that scripture where it says, you know, when your uh, walls are down, you're not protected anymore. Yeah. And it gives them literally uh, a direct contact with this uh, real power. Yeah. You're not protecting your spirit at all. No. And I, and I believe ter- personally, too, it's kind of like the concept that we talked about with vampirism and when we did the documentary uh, that we did about vampirism and also the Blue House stuff, they they feed off this stuff for a reason. They think that maybe gives them longevity or they, you know, it may it may actually do that. I don't know. The Bible says that the life is in the blood. And we, you went on, we interviewed you, David, about that. You talked about that for a while. I mean, there's no telling what all this stuff does, but I definitely wouldn't be dabbling in it if I were you. No. And I definitely think that it would be very addictive because people would get a high off of it and, um, maybe some hidden knowledge and they'll want to go right back to it again. Mm. Yep. Well, Scotty wants to know, is there any energy connected to the adrenal chrome that travels through the ether? Is there someone feeding off that energy? Probably through avenues like video game playing. The basic concept of adrenal chrome being associated with child sacrifice and is the concept as we touched on earlier that through the torture and the fear and the ramped up emotions in the innocent victim before it dies that this creates this and the pulling down of this real power into the victim that this will enable this real power to be possessed in a more 
intense way through the consumption of this adrenal chrome. And this is the conceptual connection between uh, the vril and adrenal chrome and, and child sacrifice. And it is admittedly theoretical, but this is the theory that these people operate on. And like we've drawn these connections tonight, uh, Dietrich Eckhart, uh, was in the Ordo Templar Orientis with Aleister Crowley. And the Ordo Templar or Orientis OTO, it started in Germany by, it was started in Germany by two German Freemasons, Karl Kellner and Theodore Roos. It existed in Germany, a German creation from this very same area before Crowley was ever involved. And then uh, Theodore Roos and Karl Kellner, they personally recruited Crowley uh, into the OTO because of his obvious uh, occult potential. So there's definitely uh, a basis for understanding the theory of how this all connects with the Vril through the adrenal chrome. All right, Cameron wanted to know, have there been testimonies of people uh, from people who have taken this drug? I'm not sure. This is such a... Um, taboo thing and it's such a, an elite thing that I don't think you're probably going to have people admitting and testifying to doing it. Do you know of any, John? I, I haven't looked for any or anything like that. I, um, I would imagine that probably like you said there, you know, they would, the question would be, where did you get it? How did you get it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, so. Yeah. Cause, uh, and I don't even know if adrenal chrome was listed as illegal. But, you know, the taboos associated with how this are, um, is obtained, it's not something that people are going to want to readily talk about. I don't know of any testimonies to that. That's why there's, you know, people on our side of the thing, uh, we don't know what it all does. I don't, but we know that this is from the pit of hell. So something you want to stay away from, mm -hmm. obviously. Okay, question from Allie. Could the sinkholes that keep popping up worldwide with more and more frequency be related to hollow earth, maybe beginning to cave in? Yeah, and you know, you don't have to be a rocket scientist like uh, Willie Lay to figure this out. We have, well, maybe we really do have a vibratory uh, source of energy in the hollow earth created by fallen angels and could would this possibly open up huge sinkholes like we're seeing all over the world that just fits too good doesn't it and we're seeing yeah. this all over the world and we've never i don't think we've ever seen this uh that i know of to this extent but all over we see these sinkholes so yeah absolutely uh this fits perfectly as one of the visible manifestations of what we're talking about this evening. Well, Matt's question is a different one. He wants to know where he can get a hat like David's. And whenever John decides to sell those, I have a list of people that also want those well, midnight ride hats. Well, there is a guy that made that hat for David and they're called stand steel clothing and the instead of s-t-i-l-l is s-t-e-e-l and he has a line of those at his website and he is going to be selling them for us i don't know if he's started selling any yet or not he's told me that they're up on the website i don't know if he's sold any or not but you can get them on the website the midnight ride david hats just like david has and um so go to stand steel clothing and it's S T E E L E E L E E L, and they also have the Now You See TV logo hat on there too. The ones that me and Jake wear sometimes, but awesome hats. And and we uh, when we he made it for us at the at the conference, the Take on the World conference. And David David's like, why don't you ask him if he can make these hats for us? And I said, that's like a no brainer, isn't it? This yeah. is just too cool. Yeah, and he's like, he was like, I was hoping you guys would ask me that. So yeah. he's he started making them, and I believe they're up on the website now, as far as I know. So there yeah, you go. and we have met um, him and his son at the last two Take On the World conferences. Really great tour observant brother, uh, great guy, great company, um, great hats. So it's just all good, all yeah. just all good. Yeah, the Chavez family, I believe, is their last name. Yeah, um, really, really a fine family. Um, great folks. Okay. 
Um, next question is from Rick on YouTube. Was Islam Hitler's favorite religion? I would say no. Uh, the religion of Hitler was this uh, basic philosophy of theosophy and the wedding of uh, theosophy with German folklore that come down through Guido von Liszt. And this was preached through the Vril Society and then the Thule Society and the New Templars. This was his religion. And he believed himself to be the German Messiah that was written by Guido von Liszt, who died in 1919. But his writings basically uh, connected the Blavatsky's theosophy with the German uh, folklore and the German legends to give um, Hitler the legend of the occult messiah that he plugged into. So this was Hitler's religion, the old uh, the old religion of the old gods. Okay, um, isn't this um, adrenochrome drug another form of divination? Sure. Yeah, and a lot. Of, I mean, a lot of drugs are really, if you think about oh, yeah. it. I mean, meth, methamphetamines. Uh, Can you elaborate acid. on what that means on divination, please. Yeah, go ahead, David. Well, divination is uh, obtaining information from a forbidden source, uh, whether astrology, crystal balls, Ouija board, uh, uh, reading the entrails of animals, and this is forbidden in Scripture. These are the things in Deuteronomy 18 that are abomination unto God. And the Bible says there in Deuteronomy 18 that uh, for these reasons the nations were driven out. And don't you do them because they're abomination uh, in so many words. So this is basically what divination is. Yeah, and I and I misspoke earlier too about adrenochrome and somebody not doing it. There, the movie I was talking about, uh, Your Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, uh, though I talked about earlier with Johnny Depp in it, uh, Hunter S. Thompson is the one that actually wrote about that experience uh he was a real guy hunter s thompson and so he's the one that said he got it from a satanist and all those different things so i guess there is a testimony of somebody that that did it whether he was embellishing on it or whatever uh is you know obviously i don't know but i just was thinking about that so yeah and here again they put it in the context of a movie so if they're ever called on it well that's just a movie yeah you it's know. just a story just a movie yeah Okay, Allie's next question is, Jules Verne, author of Journey to the Center of the Earth, was an alleged Rosicrucian and encrypted mysticism in his writings. Do you know anything about what he may have known or been into? Well, there, you know, whether it's Verne, Jules Verne, or H.G. Wells, there's a long association of um, literary and musical people being associated with the cult. And this is a topic that John and I could very likely be addressing in the near future, the muses, the female Nephilim that inspire this. So we see this over and over, whether it's Bram Stoker uh, that wrote Dracula, who was in the Golden Dawn, or Mary Shelley that wrote Frankenstein, and the Frankenstein and the werewolf legends, they all come from this black forest area. So there's a definite connection with people not only in science but in all of the branches of literature that are ruled by the muses the female nephilim of receiving their ability whether to write uh, books or poetry or music or science that this is coming from a supernatural source that enables them to do what they do and jules verne uh of course he wrote about all this you know um mr lighton wrote about uh, the Coming Race and the Vril. Mr. Verne wrote about Journey to the Center of the Earth, where he saw the same dinosaurs that Admiral Byrd wrote about in his diaries. Is it connected? Sure it is. It all comes from a common spiritual source revealing these things unto people. 100% agree with that. Okay, Caesar wanted to know, do you believe that the sons of Cain live in the hollow earth? Now, this is a very fascinating theory, and actually, um, I, I can't remember um, all of the uh, mathematics to it, 
But there was an actual theory that I come up with one time, so you can take it with a grain of salt, that if the sons of Cain went into the hollow earth and you correspond this with the time period of the chaining in the underworld from the book of Enoch, that this would be about our time when the sons of Cain come forth. Now, this is total theory, you know, but I have had that idea before, uh, and I have thought about that, but it's not something that uh, we could teach as a matter of scriptural doctrine, but it's something interesting to think about, and I have definitely thought about this, and there's a, a definite room in biblical theology for that theory to possibly be a reality and this is you believe that they might have right not necessarily do at the moment or is it you believe that they possibly do right now well and possibly even that the sons of cain have continued to live uh under underground that they could be you know the sons of cain in bread with the nephilim and that possibly uh with the Nephilim that are in the heart of the earth, the sons of Cain are there too. And it's, it's just pure theory. Yeah. But, you know, it could be. We don't know. But, you know, there yeah. is. these are the things that these people have wrote about. This coming race, the release, we see it in Revelation 9. The pit is opened, and all of these creatures come forth. So we don't know, but I wouldn't say it's impossible. Right. Uh, Caesar also had a question about um, a movie. He said, have you heard about this movie? Iron Sky Universe, um, the coming race leads our heroes on an adventure into the hollow earth where they must fight the virile and ancient shape-shifting Whoa. reptilian race. <laughs> wow. Hey, I'll rent the movie. I haven't heard about it, but I'll rent it and watch that one. Yeah, sounds yeah. like the book. Maybe they made yeah. it off the book. It's yeah. obviously based on it. Yeah, um, Get that title, and we'll see if we can't we'll run have that to down. to critique that one. Oh, we? yeah. Well, I guess, yeah. We <laughs> often critique movies just to see what the evil the people have put in there, so we'll know how to refute it later. Well, um, and in, in these movies, they're telling you in the movies and in the literature, they are portraying the reality of the working of the dark forces and they're also they love to tell people what's going to happen for it happens and and too many times you're going to get more truth out of hollywood than you will your pulpit on sunday morning if you know how to analyze it okay another question from uh, the youtube listeners jm in the book of job yah questioned job about the uh, bands of orion Assuming it's the constellation, why would it need to be bound? Are fallen angels locked up uh, past the firmament? Well, in the concept of loosing bands, and Job talks about binding the Pleiades and loosing the bands of Orion. And there are a lot of scriptures like Isaiah 58 talking about the true fast, about loosing the bands around people's minds. And literally... Uh, in the second heaven, there are fallen powers that in spiritual warfare we can address and affect what's going on here in the first heaven. So there's a reality to loosing the bands of Orion. And literally, uh, the, and this is a part of what we're talking about tonight. People are brainwashed by what they're listening to from the media, from the, the religious and the educational institutions, and literally the bands of Orion are coming off the minds of people, and they're beginning to receive the truth. So there's a real spiritual reality to this, and it just isn't when uh, the Bible talks about uh, binding the Pleiades and loosing Orion, the bands of Orion, it just isn't uh, something to take up ink on paper. There's spiritual reality there, and this is a part of what understanding true biblical cosmology some of the spiritual truths that this will open up to you and for those listeners who don't know uh, we do have a youtube channel and it's fojc radio and on that youtube channel there's a playlist about new spiritual warfare where david goes into more detail uh, about this method of praying uh, and why, and he explains it more if people want more info. Okay, next question is from um, Stephen. 
and he wants to thank you guys for talking about this subject this is really fascinating uh, he wants to know could it be that giants and all kinds of Nephilim were able to seek shelter from the flood and later come out and mix with Noah's family and become post flood infestation of giants and Nimrod David's looking at me you want me to answer this one I don't know um, I don't know I mean the Bible says that all everything was destroyed you know every every living being was destroyed um, that was on the earth um, and you could read that and you know it's very I guess there's there's ways you could get around the idea of that maybe they were in the earth or maybe they were above the earth you know they're flying around in flying saucers so they got loose of it I don't know David what are your thoughts on it man well, once again, this is something we can't prove, but it's a plausible theory. Um, in Job 26 and 5, the scripture says, Dead things are formed from under the waters and the inhabitants thereof. And that word dead is the word Rephaim. Yeah. Before the flood, giants were called the Nephilim. This appears only two places in Scripture, Numbers 13 and Genesis 6. After the flood, the giants were called the Rephaim. And if you look in your King James Bible, which is what I like about it, one of the many things, the word things is in italics. This means it was supplied by the translator to make it more understandable. And literally, this reads dead Rephaim are formed from under the waters and the inhabitants thereof. So it's possible that the actual Nephilim entered into the heart of the earth and survived some of them. And it's also possible that some of the drowned bodies of the Nephilim were reanimated. And in the very root uh, of the word Rephaim is the word Rapha, which means to heal or to reanimate. And it's like H.P. Uh, Lovecraft here again. We're back to the connection between uh, literature and the occult. But one of H.P. Lovecraft's novels was The Reanimator. And this could be what we're talking about here in Job 26.5, the reanimation, H.P. Lovecraft style, of these drowned bodies of the Nephilim. Here again, we can't prove it, but these are plausible theories. Read, read that one more time with the Rephaim in it because the light bulb just dinged off in my head when you said that. Job 26 and 5, dead Rephaim things are formed from under the waters and the inhabitants thereof. So they're formed under the waters, which could be in the hollow earth, and they're informed by the inhabitants thereof. Who are the inhabitants thereof? Very good question. You know, and so that's very, very good question. Very interesting. Yeah. We see these creatures like Poseidon, Poseidon, and these different uh, Greek entities, and all that's very interesting. Yeah, and here again, this would bolter the theory that well, could the lineage of Cain have been living under world underground for all these years? Some of them anyway. Well, who are the inhabitants thereof? Very good question. Yeah. There's somebody according to scripture. So yeah, very, very compelling. Hmm. Okay. Um Ryuk, I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong. Asked John, have you heard of the book The Night Parade of a Hundred Demons? A field guide to Japanese yokai. Uh, the author is Toriyama Seiken. If so, do you believe it connects to Hollow Earth? And what's your opinion on it? Thank you. I have not heard of it um, at all, and so I can't really comment to that. Have you heard of it, David? I have not. I've heard of it, but not investigated it. So we may have to do that. Okay, the next question is from Matt. I've always wondered why david says amen and amen well you know amen is just a scriptural term it means so be it so that's why i say amen uh you know it's just a little thing you do isn't yeah, it? yeah it's just one of my things i do amen <laughs> and amen so be it uh father when we, you know, our Lord often repeated. Yeah, and like, it, it says in Scripture that uh, in Yeshua, all the promises of God are in him. Amen. And mm -hmm. uh, when we pray in agreement, uh, we pray to the Father by faith in Yeshua. The promises of God are to us. Amen and amen. So that's why I do it. 
Okay, Caesar has another question. Uh, what is your opinion on those two movies, The Iron Sky, The Coming Race? Okay, I think he's repeated his question here. Sorry. Uh, but then he goes on and he says, An ancient ship shape shifting reptilian race and their army of dinosaurs. This even sounds better. 20 years after the events of the Iron Sky, the former Nazi moon base has become the last refuge of mankind. Earth was devastated by a nuclear war. Very deep under wasteland lies a power that could save humanity or destroy it once and for all. That was the Iron Sky movie, The Coming Race. So, Caesar, that's a lot of info on that movie. All right, we need to uh, go on. The next question is from Scotty. What does it mean uh, to hoax human cloning? Mean to what? Can you repeat that? H O A X, like fake. Oh, hoax. You know, it. is what I would say. Fake human cloning. It's technically I mean, I, maybe I'm answering the question. Sorry, guys. Maybe yeah. Maybe it just means that people are pretending like they're cloned or something. I don't know. Like yeah. I don't know. That they've accomplished it. Maybe. 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 I I do know this. This is, is you know the accomplishment of human cloning is very possible. They cloned the the sheep in like the late eighties, early nineties, you know, they clone that sheep. They, there's a cloning company in Texas that clones thousands of animals, uh, uh, for people that want their breed to be a certain way. So, I mean, the cloning technology, technology is very much so there. There's no reason they couldn't do it other than maybe ethically or legally. Uh, so the idea that they can't do it, I think is, um, I, I think that's kind of foolish. It's like saying somebody can't, you know, um, you know, do something that's already been done. I don't understand why they, that it couldn't have been done. Whether it has been done, I don't know, but it definitely can. There's no doubt about that. There's a huge company in Texas that clones tons of farm animals. So, I mean, if they can clone farm animals and all that, they can clone humans too. David, you got anything? Sure they can. And I don't think there are many people that would believe that there are not in existence these black labs that are cloning human beings. I mean, there are legal restrictions on what can be done in public observable labs, but do you think that Putin or even our government that we're not doing this uh, going forward with this? I think that not many people would believe that this isn't going on if you think about it. Yeah, I mean, you look at the MK Ultra and stuff. They didn't ask for permission on that; they yeah. just did it. So, in yeah. our like I said with, earlier, we were talking about all the different tests that have been done on society uh, syphilis tests on people and all these different things uh you know we have great i mean not to get into conspiracy of vaccines but you see what they're doing to us and that and there's no but no sure. re recourse for that so yeah sure well, I think scotty was explaining i believe that they meant the picture something about the picture that you posted might be a hoax uh, I'm, I'm not sure which picture that. i posted i posted the real really and clone aid their advertisement for their website it that wasn't a hoax but there are pictures going around from uh the, the show that i talked about earlier uh altered carbon that people are saying are actual clones but it's actually from the movie um you can look at the movie okay. and watch it so there if that's what he's talking about yeah there are definitely hoax pictures of that i, I mean probably I'll, clarifying yeah. it better yeah. then thank you yeah okay matt wanted to know do you think trump overturning the law where churches can't back political parties to keep church and state separate is a way to enforce blue laws, which would uh, in turn put an attack on Sabbath keeping Christians. That could happen is all I could say. That could happen. Um, you know, the difference between uh, a republic and a democracy is that a republic is designed to protect the protect the rights of the minority and just ask yourself this question if a sabbath law you know and i remember used to it's, you're getting away from this uh that you couldn't sell liquor on sunday and if a sabbath law would be passed um it would not be in favor of the true biblical Sabbath. It in, would in fact work against the true biblical Sabbath and those that would honor it. So yeah, this is something to really think about. And uh, before we get too excited about that, um, you know, we might want to think that one through a little bit. 
Yeah, because in Revelation it says that the dragon makes war with the, those that have the testimony of Jesus and those that obey the commandments. And so he's not making war with these uh, lukewarm believers that don't care about obeying him. In fact, he probably is the one preaching to them on Sunday morning. Uh, so I would really definitely, like David said, I mean, yeah, this that, that's an interesting, scary concept in a way because I have noticed – Every year around this time, around the fall feast, and for those of you this is your first time listening, you don't know what I'm talking about, in the Bible there are uh, called appointed times, and they're the creator's appointed times. He says, these are when you're going to do this, this is the holiday, this is this, this is that, and he has these. And we don't hear about them in church, which is very odd, <laughs> just like we don't hear about the Sabbath. But these are the actual holidays that are in the Bible, right? We talk about the Feast of Tabernacles, the Passover, the the uh, you know day of atonement, all these different things that are going on, uh, but in the church we have Christmas, which has got ties in paganism, Easter ties in paganism, and all these different things that have these ties. Around this time of year is the biggest uh, time for pagan holidays, and it's also the biggest time for the holidays of the Father. And there's a real battle going on. Uh, I've noticed several groups that have attacked us outright and attacked of other groups outright because we choose to obey the Father. We choose to do the Sabbath. It's one of the Ten Commandments. Um, remember the Sabbath. Remember something that says remember and keep it holy. We do that. Oh, my goodness, we're Judaizers. You should never keep the Sabbath. And I know that that sounds like bondage, but you know what my Sabbath looked like today? Getting up around 10 o'clock a.m., sitting back, reading a book, and doing just enjoying myself reading and studying that was my day of the sabbath while my kids played and i had a good time or going and hanging out and fellowshipping and partying with my friends that's my idea and i'm not talking about partying like the world but fellowshipping with my fellow believers that's if that's bondage i mean sign me up but also you have these holidays that are over and over again year we get a day off every week uh, they call it bondage, but I, I call it obeying the scripture. And, and honestly, it's for our best interest. It's pretty awesome. So anyways, that's uh, I don't even remember what the question was. And, and so I'll well, pass it on. Uh, it was about what Trump has been doing. But, oh, you the know, Sabbath I do, Trump's yeah. been doing a lot of things that we may not understand. And those things sometimes sound pretty good until we think about it and analyze just like this. What could happen? Mm -hmm. So. We're just going to have to wait and see. There, There is such a divided group out here. I see it, things posted on Facebook. Some people just love Trump, think he's God's man for the hour. And other people said, no, 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 no. And, you know, time will tell. But we still need to pray for him. I pray for his salvation. Because I think if that would really happen, things could change. And maybe God could use him in a different way. So I have not given up praying for him. Allie's question is, uh, Donald Marshall talked about reptilian viral and the eye entry using an appendage. And he said the Egyptian eye with that thing coming down is a symbol, symbolic of that. Do you think all the modern celebrities, celebrities with what looks like a lazy eye may have been viral droned? Before you answer this, don't go too hard in on the lazy eye because my right eye is kind of droopy itself. So. Okay, well you you can answer that, John, if you'd like. <laughs> no, go. No, you 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 studied it. Donald Marshall, he seems a little loopy to me. Whether or not he's telling the truth, I don't know. Uh, I definitely believe something bad has happened to the man. Whether um, w no matter what it may be, whether it's uh, you know a, a abuse or whether he was kept in a facility, I don't know about that. But like I said earlier, the people when they do the eye symbol, I think that some of them definitely know what that is and i think some of them have no idea but the droopy eye thing there's you were talking about something before and i and i in my eyes not like crazy droopy i've seen some of these pictures some of these eyes look like they they got replaced with another size eye yeah and um i was mentioning earlier of these celebrities um i remember rihanna and mickey minaj uh j-lo and several others that uh i'm not that hip on a lot of these modern celebrities, but a lot of the very biggest ones, you can see uh, them portraying their eye with the black 
makeup coming down and the theory is put forward by some people that this is from they're portraying the concept of droning mm -hmm. where this real reptilian has entered into their eye so this is theory but in my mind with what we've talked about tonight it's plausible theory and um the fact uh that human cloning and droning is not being achieved um, I don't doubt it. I don't doubt it. And you know that these people, uh, these A-list celebrities that are into all this bizarre um, occult uh, practices, and they can afford adrenal chrome or whatever they want. And it, I, I would not doubt that this is happening in these circles. Another question from one of our YouTube listeners, Old Warrior wants to know where are those big ugly giants right now well there are some that are indeed chained and we were talking about in our enoch commentary just a couple of weeks ago about um there's a scripture in jude and second peter it talks about uh, the one in Second Peter 2 and 4, I believe, being chained in Tartarus. And there are some that are chained uh, until their final punishment. And the Bible also speaks of some that are going to be released after a period of time. And uh, these are a part of what I believe I referred to earlier as the 90%. And it's always a mystery why um, there are dark powers that are allowed to exist and continue and we understand that the father wants a remnant that will serve him just because we love him and we choose to serve God and access his power rather than the phony power of the dark world so this is a reality some of these there are fallen angels that are not chained that are operating in the second and the third heaven we see this in Daniel chapter 10 so some are chained some are not and we even got into a passage in the book of Enoch in our commentary which by the way if you want to see the entire Enoch commentary we've done 20 some shows this is on the subscription based network of now you see tv and there are even different degrees of punishment that are meted out to these fallen powers so uh, this is uh, a part of the answer there it's a very uh, in-depth response to really sort it all out there okay uh, someone had just stepped in katie and and she just heard you answering that question about the second heaven hosting fallen angels and do you think that all the stars are angels pretty much that's what scripture says and the bible says uh, in the book of enoch that there are some objects up there that are moved by angels he heavenly luminaries that move these or, or excuse me angels that move these heavenly luminaries and some of the stars stars are referred to as angels in scripture uh, and in the book of Enoch and other non-canonical texts. So yeah, they are. Some are fallen, some are not. And the Bible tells us in Daniel 10 that there is warfare going on in the second heaven. It talks about Gabriel and Daniel. Uh, literally, the word, word is hold or restrain there in Daniel chapter 10. And I believe that Michael and the angels, that this is the true biblical restrainer, not the Holy Spirit as is taught in dispensationalism. So yeah, there's definitely... Uh, conflict in the spiritual realm that is a uh, reality okay guys i uh, cut off the questions because we were beginning to do a lot of them we're actually gonna end a little bit earlier like three minutes wow Gee, wow we've, i don't think we've ever done that i maybe should have no, asked for just perfect. a few more questions no but. i mean that is just pretty much perfect there sister donna great job and um great questions uh great job great questions and um it's just been a real pleasure to um be along on this ride Fantastic. and i guess maybe you might just reiterate and tell why this was so important this topic why we should know about this well basically this real power 
this is what the adepts in the occult world are channeling this power not only to attack believers directly, but to have their occult power to bring in the final leg here of the New World Order. So by understanding this, and one of the real solutions for us is the the Psalm 119 has eight passages where the word meditate is used. We meditate on the Word of God, and we focus our mind upon what we see with our eyes in the Word. And in occult meditation, they will tell you, instead of focusing your mind, let your mind go dark or, oh, I've got a revelation. This is really your Hebrew name. Write it down and meditate on it three times a day. They will pervert true biblical meditation into Kabbalistic and occult meditation. And when they do this, they take you from the vibrations of God to the vibrations of the Vril. So we want to make our mind active by actively studying and meditating upon the Word of God Therefore, our mind will be renewed and will not fall prey to the deception. But only those that do that will not be fooled by this. Uh, There's no other way, there's no other solution than meditating in the Word and putting our heart and our mind on that which the Father tells us to. And David, I just want to say, you know, once again, thanks for uh, allowing me to do this show. And thanks for, you know, uh, doing this midnight ride and choosing Now You See TV as a venue for you to do it. We, I really uh, am thankful for our audience, obviously. I'm thankful uh, for you guys. And we try our best to make, you know, we, we realize you guys are investing two hours of your time. And we want to make sure that we provide you with the most quality information and the best things that we can possibly do. And we're very thankful to be able to do that and just blessed and and you know these are some of my favorite shows david when it's just me and you talking and discussing these things and um just i appreciate it man well i feel the same way um when we do shows together those are the ones that i feel good about we try our very best to bring you a the best Uh, most compelling midnight ride we can every Saturday night. And quite honestly, some are better than others. We realize that. And sometimes the best laid plans don't always work out like we intend. But we're doing our very best to uh, bring you the cutting edge truth of God that the remnant needs to know. And as John said, when John and I can get together and tackle these subjects, these are my very favorites. I love this show tonight. And I can leave the studio tonight feeling that we have obeyed God and have brought you the information that the Father wanted us to bring you. So for John, uh, I really thank you for that. And I want to thank Sister Donna, as always, for bringing forth the questions tonight. And I want to thank you, the Midnight Ride audience. You are the best. We love you. We couldn't be here doing this if it wasn't for you out there. Thank you so very much. And with that, it's time for the Midnight Ride High Five. Good night, everybody. We'll see you next Saturday night on the Midnight Ride. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast. Rise up, rise up, rise up.